Hi guys, welcome back to another video. It is quite early, so I'm trying to be a, a bit quiet. Um, right here, it is 10.09. But I thought I'd still make a video. I thought I would read you one of my favourite stories out of one of my favourite books called Princess Mirabelle. It is by Julia D Donaldson and it is illustrated by Lydia Monks, I think. And this is what it is. And my favourite chapter is chapter 2. Because it's a really good chapter, I think it's really good. So I thought I might read it to you. It's called Ellen's Castle, because there's a little girl called Ellen, and Princess M Mirabelle always pops out. The, 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 the mirror, mirror where, wherever Ellen is. Alright, so it's called Ellen's Castle. Let's start. Ellen and her mother were in one of the changing rooms of a big department store. They were supposed to be buying a dress for Ellen to wear to her grown-up cousin's wedding, but nothing seemed to fit or look right. That greeny blue colour suits you, said Ellen's mum, but it's too tight. I'll go and see if they've got a bigger size. Ellen didn't really care what she wore to the wedding no one would be looking at her since she hadn't been asked to be a bridesmaid something she felt a bit cross about she practiced making the most hideous face at herself in the mirror the one where her eyeballs rolled up and almost out of sight and her bottom lip jutted over the top one if she did that at the wedding people would look at her but of course she would be too shy to to do it when the time came. This time, though, the face didn't seem to be working properly. The eyeballs in the mirror rolled back to the to the to normal, and the mouth went back to its ordinary shape. Then opened and said, "You just look like that wicked fairy, the one who pricked my finger." Mirabelle exclaimed, "Ellen, what are you doing here?" Mirabelle stepped out of the mirror. She was wearing a, a too tight greeny blue dress just like the one Ellen had on. I see you've moved house, she said, looking around her. This isn't a house. It's a, it's a shop, said Ellen, but M -M 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 Mirabelle wasn't listening. She had picked up Ellen's coat from the floor where it was lying inside out and was putting it on the way on and was putting it on that way so that the tartan lining was on, was on the outside. Not bad, she said, looking at her reflection. Then come on, let, let's see what your cook has made for lunch. And she walked out of the changing room. No, stop, cried Ellen. Give me back my coat. She ran after M Mirabelle, who was merrily weaving her way around the rails and stands of clothes. You've got a lot of clothes, she said, when Ellen caught up with her. Almost as many as me. Though not such beautiful ones, of course. One minute. One minute, guys. I don't suppose I don't suppose you've got a ball gown made of rose petals stitched together with spider's thread, have you? No, I haven't, said Ellen. But I don't think I'd want one. Wouldn't the rose petals shrivel up and die? Mirabelle thought for a moment, and then said, "No, they've been dipped in a magic fountain which keeps them fresh forever." By this stage, they had reached the escalator. Mirabelle hopped onto it. This is fun. He said, does it go down to the dungeons? No, said Ellen, riding down beside her. It goes down to the food department. The banquet hall, do you mean? Asked M -M 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 Mirabelle. Oh, good, I'm starving. She skipped off the escalator where they, they were in the fruit and vegetable section of the food department. Mirabelle picked up a potato and put it down in disgust. It's raw, she said. How does your cook expect us to eat that? She inspected the cabbages and cauliflower. What sort of banquet is this supposed to be? 
she asked. None of the food is cooked at all. It's not supposed to be cooked. People take it home to cook, Ellen. Ellen tried to explain. Look, M -m 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 Maribel, do give me back my raincoat. I must get back to Mum. These apples look all right, said Mirabelle, picking up one and taking a large bite of it. She picked up an another one and did the same. With the green and red, red apples like these, I only ever bite the green side, she explained. You can't be too careful. There could be a wicked queen g g girl going around putting poison into the red sides. Look what happened to my friend Snow White. She took a bite out of another apple. Just then, the shop assistant came up. Stop eating the fruit, she said to Mirabelle. Start cooking the veg vegetables, M -m -m Mirabelle said back to her. The shop assistant looked startled and asked Mirabelle where her mum or dad was. Sitting on their thrones, I expect, said Princess said Mirabelle. Come on, Ellen, let's go and play in your bedroom. She grabbed Ellen's hand and pulled her into the into a lift. Does this go up to the battle moment, she asked as the door closed. No, said Ellen. You seem to think this is some, so, some kind of castle, but it's not. It's a, ah, here's your bedroom, said Mirabelle as the lift doors opened on the second floor. There, they were in the furniture department. Mirabelle darted past some armchairs and sofas to an area full of beds and mattresses. She flung herself down on a double bed and almost immediately sprang off it again. I hope you don't sleep on that one, she said. I certainly c c couldn't sleep a wink on it. No, I don't, said Ellen. This isn't my good, said Mirabelle, because there's a pee under a mattress. I'm sorry if my hair's a bit messy. I haven't brushed it yet. How do you know? We princesses can always tell. Said Mirabelle and flopped down onto another bed. Oh, she said, there's a baked bean under this one. Horribly lumpy. Lie down and you, may, and maybe you'll, you'll be, you'll be able to feel it too. Ellen giggled. She looked round. There wasn't a shop assistant in sight. She lay down on the bed next to Mirabelle. It felt wonderfully springy and comfortable. I can't feel anything, she said. That must be because you're not a princess, said Mirabelle. Ordin ordinarily. Ordinary. Ordinary people have to bounce to, 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 to dispect peas and beans and the mattresses like this. She got onto her feet and began to jump up and down on the bed. Come on, she said. Ellen looked around again. There wasn't. There was still no shop assistants to be seen. She joined Mirabelle, and soon the two of them were bouncing about on the bed, making the springs on the mattresses twang. Twang, I mean. This is nearly as good as the school trampoline, said Ellen breathlessly. It's not as good as a palace trampoline, said Mirabelle. Once I bounced right up into the clouds from that. Did you come down all right? No, I didn't, said Mirabelle. The north wind saw me up there and swept me away to, to the land of ice. What happened then? But Ellen never found out because at that moment an angry looking shop assistant came towards them. Quick, let's run, Ellen said. But Mirabelle had a different idea. She jumped off the bed and advanced towards the assistant as angrily as he was advan advancing towards them. Ah, there you are at last, she said. Before he had a, Before he had a chance to speak, I want to complain about the state of this bedroom. Peas and beans under all the mattresses. It's disgraceful. Set to work removing them immediately or, or you'll be f fired from the castle. And with that, she linked her arm in Ellen's. In Ellen's, turned and strode off towards the escalator. I don't know what that sentence means.
The shop assistant was left gawping as they sailed up to the toy department. So this is your playroom, isn't it? Asked Princess Mir asked Prin asked Mirabelle. Ellen tried to explain that they were not her toys, but Mirabelle was already empty. Emptying the pieces of a jigsaw puzzle out onto the floor. Too much sky in this one, she said, and moved on. Aren't you going to clear it up? asked Ellen. I asked Ellen, what? And let your lazy servants get even lazier? Certainly not. Mirabel continued down the aisles of that down the aisle of toys, emptying out various boxes, not satisfied till she reached a shelf full of cuddly toys. They were teddies and rabbits and puppies and monkeys, but Mirabel picked up a furry green frog and kissed it on the nose. Why, are, are you doing that? asked Ellen. I'm turning him into a prince, said Mirabel. Princesses can do that, you know. Even furry frogs? Yes, they just turn into furry princes. That's all? It's to, to turn into, f into furry princes, that's all. This one seems to want to stay a frog, though said Mirabelle. All right, you s s s s s s s silly creature. Away you leap. And she threw the frog across the shop and turned her attention to a teddy. I've never tried it on a bear, she said. But Ellen had noticed a man coming towards them from about where the frog must have landed. He looked even crosser than the bed man had done. She tugged at... Mirabelle's sleeve in alarm, but Mirabelle looked delighted to see the man. Don't you see? It's the prince, she said. He doesn't look a, a very nice prin prince, mind you. She went on as the man drew closer. You're not very furry either. As he, as he came, you count your fully woolly moustache. What do you think you are d d doing? The man asked. Aren't you going to say thank you? Mirabelle said to him. What? For throwing toys around? No, for breaking the spell, of course, said Mirabelle. Though, if I'd known what a bad tempered prince you'd turn out to be, I wouldn't have b b b bothered. Can't say I blame a wit that which for turning you into a frog in the first place come on ellen she turned around and walked brisk briskly away calling over her shoulder and if you think you are going to marry me you've got another thing coming the man stood rooted to the spot for a few moments to astound the the follow by the follow them by the time he did, Mirabelle and Ellen dived into the lift. Prin Mirabelle pressed the top button. Perhaps this will take us to the battlements at last, she said. It says offices only, said Ellen. When they, when they got out, there they were in a corridor with a few doors leading off it. One of the doors was ajar and Ellen could hear a familiar voice coming from it. I only went out for a couple of minutes to look for another dress, and when I got back, she'd gone. Ellen couldn't bear to hear Mum sounding so upset. Come with me, she said to Mirabelle, and ran into the room. Her, her mother was there with another lady. Oh, there you are, darling, said Mum, hugging her. Where have you been? With Mirabelle. She took my coat, so I had to follow her, said Ellen. She's just outside. She took her mother's hand and pulled her into the corridor. There was no one there. You didn't mention another little girl, said the shop lady to Mum. There isn't one, really. It's just my the daughter's imaginary friend. She's n n not imaginary. She's real, Ellen protested. The light outside the lift showed that it had still been on the top floor. 
She must be in there, in here, said Ellen, pressing the button. The doors opened, apart from a crumpled raincoat with a tartan lining lying on the floor. The lift was empty. Where on earth was Princess Mirabel? It was only then that Ellen noticed something which she should have no spotted before. The walls of the lift were covered in mirrors. Princess Mirabel had disappeared. Right, so that was my favourite story in this book. All the stories in this book are the best. That is why I love this book. More than any of the other Princess Mirabel books I've got. Right, before I go, I'm just going to show you the other ones I've got. Right, the other stories in here are... So chapter one, The Dragon Pox. Chapter two, Ellen's Castle. Chapter three, Snow White and the Eight Dwarfs. And this one is just called Princess Mirabel. Let me get the rest. All right. The next one is Princess Mirabel and Prince Precious Paws. So the first story is Chapter 1, Prince Precious Paws. Chapter 2, Witch Witch. No, Witch Witch. It's like, which witch is it? Like, which witch? Chapter 3, The Princess Test. The, the witch witch I can't really explain. This next one is called Princess Mirabel and the Party Poppers. That was just my mum texting me if you heard a beep. All right, so this one's called Princess Mirabel and the Party Hoppers. Chapter one, Party Hoppers. Chapter two, Wobblest Day. Wobblest Day. It's supposed to be like Wednesday, but it's like Wobblest Day. I can't really read it. Chapter three, Love Potion Crisps. So the next one is Princess Mirabel and the Sea Monsters Cave. Chapter 1, Sea Monsters Cave. Chapter 2, The Unusual Pets Club. This one only has two stories. This one has two stories. This one has two stories. The last three have two stories. And, and the other three have three stories. Alright, this... we already done that one. This one's called Princess Mirabel and the Magic Shoes. Maybe it's because the first story's long. Yeah, because like, the Sea Monsters Cave is long. I've read that before. It's long. Princess Mirabel and the Magic Shoes, this one is called. And it says, chapter one, the Magic Shoes, chapter two, the Golden Goose. And the last one is Princess Mirabel and the Flying Horse. And chapter one, the Flying Horse, chapter two, the Magic Ball. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. And I hope to see you in my next video. Bye for now.